So people often refer to Sula to be simply as a faster Apache Cassandra, and uh, despite the fact we are, today I will prove you wrong. So in the SolarDB monitoring, we have a three node cluster doing half a million operations per second while sustaining single digit millisecond latencies. In fact, I already challenge you to achieve similar levels of performance with Apache Cassandra. So unlike uh, Apache Cassandra, SolarDB shards your data per CPU core, fully maximizing the available hardware resources and latencies are sustained given that our architecture doesn't suffer from stop the world garbage collection pulses. So let's now basically run a scaling exercise and double our cluster size. With SillaDB, you basically add nodes in parallel, while in Apache Cassandra, you add nodes one by one and still have to run, you know, maintenance tasks such as cleanup after you are done. This means that doubling a SillaDB cluster takes just a few minutes, while doubling an Apache Cassandra cluster can take hours or even days. Uh, this means that SillaDB is not just faster than Cassandra, but also easier to manage, while it's requiring less infrastructure to get the job done, uh, directly saving your organization's budget. So what we are going to see next is that uh, even with lots of data movement going on, our latencies were barely affected. And here's another difference compared to Apache Cassandra for you. SillaDB implements its own cache. This means you don't have to spend time tuning your key cache, row cache, decide whether your main table will be stored on heap, off heap, and so on. And uh, SillaDB also actually knows how to keep your latencies under control thanks to heat-weighted load balancing. Finally, SillaDB streams data as fast as possible, almost maximizing the available network throughput. Given that, that we are finished with scaling, let's now actually get to 1 million operations per second. Can you do that with just 6 nodes uh, with Apache Cassandra? So we basically scaled our workload to 1 million now, and uh, after a few iterations, uh, that's it. We basically get to 1 million operations per second, still sustaining single digit millisecond latencies. Now, let's run a secondary workload. With SillaDB, you can define uh, different priorities on a per workload basis. We call that workload prioritization. Here, we define a real-time workload with 10 times a higher priority to system resources than a secondary workload. After we fire that up, uh, we can see that our second workload latencies are higher than our real-time, uh, while the real-time workload latencies were barely affected. Next, what we are going to do is, let's quickly recall that the ratio is 1 to 10, and uh, let's go to the advanced da dashboard, where we can then observe that SillaDB indeed will dedicate 10 times more CPU time to our real-time workload, as opposed to the secondary one, just like we expected and just like we configured up front. So now that we understood how workload prioritization works, let's now scale the cluster back in. Maybe we are outside uh, of peak hours and want to save our uh, own infrastructure. With a single click of the button, we get our application back to doing half a million operations per second. And then what we are going to do next is basically scaling the cluster. Unlike uh, Apache Cassandra, uh, SillaDB internally uses Raft to manage state, and it handles the entire decommission process for you out of the box. So what does this mean is that at the end of the day, uh, topology changes in SillaDB 
are not only faster, but they are much easier to manage. They are also more reliable and they require much less babysitting than what you currently have today with Apache Cassandra. So before we wrap up, let me ask you for one more time. Can you do this with Apache Cassandra? All right, so I hope you enjoyed this demo and that you are now curious to learn more about ScyllaDB. Um, feel free to reach out should you have any technical questions or sign up for the ScyllaDB Cloud free trial so you can experiment with and prove the value of ScyllaDB by yourself. Thanks.